so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, I am so sorry y'all for the delay. It has just been a tremendous experience trying to get these episodes out for this forgiveness series. This is our second to last one. This is the one on control. And tomorrow we're going to end with miscommunication. My goal, again, my goal Apparently, this was not God's will, but I wanted to have everything done by Friday because I'm a stickler. I like to have things, you know, set up. We do this day. We do this time. Well, God had other plans. And after the experiences I've had in the last four or five days, I understand why he did not allow that. Because now what's happening is I've gotten more information. I've gotten more understanding on why God did not want me to say certain things and do certain things because even then there was more healing. There was more forgiveness. There was even more understanding. So with that being said, I want to just say thank you very much. I think it's important to give you guys your flowers and just to say thank you from my heart. I have a lot of other things that are coming up. You guys have been showing me love on the last few shorts I've posted and someone asked me, to explain what I meant by secret sauce and all of these things. So those videos are coming up. 50 rejection letters is coming up. All of my, my, you know, I got a lot of good things coming up for you guys. So thank you again. Make sure you like, you share, subscribe, turn on the notifications and make sure you download your copy of this ebook on forgiveness. It's right below the description excuse me, it is right in the description right below this video and it's activated right now and you can get it. I'd like you to get it so that you can ca- uh, follow along with me guys. Okay. So if you have been rolling with me, the first day we talked about forgiveness of yourself, then we talked about forgiveness that was inspired by abuse, meaning someone abused you and you were struggling with forgiving the abuser. The next day we talked about ego and today we've landed on control. Tomorrow we're going to finish the series with miscommunication. Uh, And yes, please guys, I would love to know your opinions. Thank you so much for sewing and for letting me know that this is something that has been helping you and it has been putting you on a path to healing. So y'all, let's get into it. Let's go ahead and open up our eBooks to page 16, okay? And that is where we're going to start off today as we talk about control-based unforgiveness, okay? So one of the things that I found very interesting in my time studying and asking the Lord about, you know, just giving me revelation on this was that you could see that control and ego-based unforgiveness were very, very similar. Now, the thing that I found very interesting, though, about that was, although they were very similar, they were also very, very different. So in some cases, some of the things that you would see as um, extensions of that type of unforgiveness, they appear to be the same things that can go on the list with ego-based unforgiveness, but there's a thin line. Here's something that I realized. Oftentimes, the driving force between the two is very different because you can have someone who is ego driven, but that does not necessarily make them controlling. You can also have someone who's controlling, but they may not be egotistical or not, you know, ego maniacal. They could be very much open, you know, they're not leading with their, you know, their own opinion and not leading with their self. It's just that they may have been, a, they, may, they just may be a person who likes structure and control is the thing that feels, uh, excuse me, that gives them power. They feel empowered when they are in control, right? And most people do. That's the whole thing about control because you're literally guiding the situation, right? So 
One of the interesting that excuse me, one of the interesting things that I found though about control was that you know if you're not careful, it could really be something just it it could be so what's the word y'all? I would say it could be really interesting to see how oftentimes we don't connect the dots and we don't get that. When we don't allow wiggle room in some situations, when we don't allow people the opportunity to fail forward or to figure things out for themselves, we don't realize how badly that could be to our detriment. Because sometimes when we don't forgive somebody because we felt like they would not let go of control and they did not do what we wanted them to do. Sometimes y'all, not every time, but a lot of times we don't realize that sometimes the thing that God is trying to push through them or trying to come to you, it'll work better without you controlling it. And that is the part that people don't like to talk about because then, you know, again, it can make you feel bad. It can make you feel like, Hey, I said what I said. And again, none of these things are going to really add value to the outcome that you really desire. Now it's interesting because the, the, the header on this particular page goes back to something that I've been putting out for years now, and it's called Perfectly Imperfect. And the reason why I connected perfectly, perfectly imperfect with control was because oftentimes in our imperfections, that is where we can find God's perfection. And usually you find that because we always have to let God be in control. Where do y'all think Jesus take the wheel came from? That's basically saying, hey, I'm giving you control. When you say, hey, take the wheel, that's saying, hey, I'm going to let you run this thing. I'm going to let you drive this ship. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you navigate, right? So what happens is when you do not allow yourself the opportunity to relinquish control and allow another outcome or to allow someone else to possibly see it through a, a vantage point that you may not see it, You can miss so much. And I can personally tell you from experience, I have naively done that for a long time. And when I started to understand over the past few years how you have to learn how to still speak up for yourself and still have a voice and still take care of things and run things if need be. But you also have to understand that oftentimes when you are wanting to control something and you feel that deep desire to control something is not always the very best thing to do, especially if there are multiple or other parties involved. Usually when we are by ourselves, we're subject to our own devices. But when you have to include other people, sometimes the way you've done it and the way you do it, it might not be the best particular thing for that situation. And I know, newsflash, that might be unbelievable. (laughs) And usually it is because we usually do things on our own for so long because we have to or we have to take care of others, or we have to put ourselves in this situation because we know if I know this works, then I know the job is going to get done. And I got too much stuff that I have to do. So when, when the question is posed, well, can you let go of control of this and someone else can take this over? Or it might not even be another human being. It could literally just be a situation that you're controlling or you're going through in your life. And God says, hey, sit that thing down. I'm going to do it. How many of y'all can relate to that? Right? Because here's the thing. If you want to be healed from something like that, you have to commit to that. And what I'm learning through forgiveness, one of the big words, one of the big, the biggest elephant in the room. And (coughs) y'all, this is crazy. The biggest elephant in the room, room is the word commit. Commitment. Okay? People don't understand how commitment is is, uh, attached to forgiveness. And you want to know what happens usually in this day and age? Nobody wants to commit. Y'all, oftentimes forgiveness is a whole commitment. If you are dealing with someone and you are struggling with forgiveness with that person and they just non-committal in general in their lives, they're only committed to the thing. They got tunnel vision on. They're not committed to relationships. They're not committed to anything, maybe one or two things. You are going to have a problem. And guess what? If you're that person, this is going to be a huge wake up call because what you learn when you study these types of things and you try to get beneath those layers that the enemy puts in front of us to keep us from living in God's perfect will, you start to see some hard, tough 
things. And oftentimes those hard, tough things, they do not make way for us to prosper. They do not make way for us to be healed. The enemy wants you to be sad, wants you to be destroyed, wants you to shoot yourself in the foot because you have to do things your way. You have to do things the way you say they should go. Again, control is not necessarily ego. I know people who are egomaniacal and it's all about them. But when it comes to controlling certain things, they don't even care. (laughs) They're just like, yo, I just got to be the star of the show. I'm Gucci. Like, I don't have to run it. It's just that when I arrive, I arrive, right? So you can't, everybody, those things are not necessarily linked up as one and the same. That's why I believe that when the Lord was showing me the different things to highlight, it was very specific because what I also think is happening is this, okay? I think many people who have made genuine attempts at forgiveness, they have not been successful because they misname it, okay? And I've been trying to be very intentional about words, okay? Oftentimes, y'all, when it comes to words, when someone asks us something, we can say, hey, you know, I'm mad about that, right? But then when you sit for a second, it's like, wait a minute, is mad the correct word? Because madness is connected to anger, hostility, and such. And I'm looking at you, you do not seem mad. You seem more concerned. You seem more hurt. You seem more perplexed. And it's not to make somebody be the words that you're describing, but what it does is it makes a person think beyond that first thing that pops up, which leads me to something that I posted on my IG. I'm going to post the link to that underneath this post as well. Remember I told y'all some things came up and I realized this is why God delayed me talking about control, right? So I figured out something like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation, but some of you are in a situation where you're not forgiven by someone because you tried to take control of a situation. And then when it was brought back to you, you couldn't connect the dots because you're like, yeah, I wasn't trying to do that. But it didn't matter what you said, because every time you would try to explain this, it seemed like you were lying. It seemed like something was off. Okay, even down to the point where other people could feel it, like they could feel your spirit being off or they could feel something just being odd about you. Right. And it's so interesting because I I had gone through this, too, but multiple people have been going through this. It was really odd. Usually I have these types of experiences and they're isolated. But around the same time, I was hearing about this from so many people. I don't know what was going on, but it was just this interesting thing where. People who are normally known for doing one thing, they were being villainized for something that didn't even match their personhood. Now, let me let me be clear about that. When I say villainized, I'm going to say that a picture was painted. Now, the reason why that picture was painted was because the person in question, they did questionable things. This is not a, you know, we got to be fair on here. We can't make a person seem like they're perfect and they're not. No. But what I did realize was there was a common thread with these situations and what it ended up appearing to me, what it it ended up appearing to me as was, I think that, I just think that whole sentence sounded really crazy. I don't know what I was trying to say, but I'm so, (laughs) let me try to say that again. Again, I'm not cutting that out because that was freaking hilarious. Okay. Let's try to say this again. Okay. I don't think that all of that was happening with all of those people in tandem like that and everybody kind of going through similar things that I knew and that I was encountering. Even some strangers, believe it or not. I saw a couple things online. I also knew some people personally who were, who were going through similar things. But what I realized was there was a common thread and everyone who identified with experiencing this either feeling like They encountered someone acting like that and they weren't feeling how they were acting or they were the person acting like that. Either way, it was the same thing. And it was almost like the thing I've been telling y'all about with masking. Masking, I mentioned that I think on the ego episode, but masking has to do with appearing one way 
but then you're really not that way, but you lead with the masking. So the masking comes off as who you are or who you have become or what you portray. So once I dug a little deeper, right, again, we going back to commitment, digging deeper, pulling out all of this stuff that's embarrassing and hurtful and stuff I know I did. And I just came off like it got to be my way or the highway. Or, uh, 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 I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And let me tell y'all, that's hard because when you know it's just the oddest thing, it's like your actions and your mind, it's just not lining up with what you really genuinely feeling and believing. But if you're talking to people who do not understand the battle that you have, it's just going to appear like you're just trying to get out of it and you don't want nobody to tell you nothing and, and, and you don't want to just take responsibility. And it that is such a horrible space to be in. That is a, let me tell you, if you are not careful in that space and if you don't have enough people around you to help you, even if you don't have people, but if you don't have your own relationship with God where you don't have nobody around you and you just got to pull on God to help you see what's going on and to get out of it so you can fix what you're doing wrong, that could be a real dark place. Because the thing is, can you imagine you keep trying to explain yourself and no matter what you do, you keep doing the opposite of what you're trying to explain Imagine if you're doing this for decades, like decades later, you're doing it and you just, you're like, no, this is not my heart. Like I am not trying to do this and you cannot, you cannot break free from it. There are so many people that are unforgiven by people because they did not quote unquote, get the lesson. They didn't quote unquote, do what they think they should be doing. Or this is so nasty and so ugly about them. There's so many people who are not forgiving people in that space and they don't understand what's actually going on with them. I'm not talking about people who, you know, ugly, who, you know, don't, you know, people don't like them in general. What happens is there are times when again, uh, here we go with the, the crazy talking again, 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 <laughs> I am starting to realize that there are some very strategic things that have happened that I believe when these things are allowed to happen in our lives, we have to be able to take responsibility for our shortcomings. The thing that I want to be very clear about is this. Even if I make a reference to something or I say something I did or even someone else did, it is never from a place of Oh, I'm so perfect. Yeah, this happened, but this and that didn't happen. No, you still got to take responsibility for the things you do, even if you didn't mean no harm. You know what I'm saying? Even if, even if, it, even if you just didn't mean to do it, right? But what I think is very helpful and very beautiful about this space is once you keep fighting to get past where the, the, the discrepancy came in, once you get past understanding that there's something much greater going on here. It's a, it's a bigger thing happening. Once you understand that, that changes everything because this is what I also learned. Those of you who are struggling with, with, uh, uh, control based unforgiveness, there's something also going on within you that you're going to have to address because it's not just about that person. It's not just about that person who's making you feel a way like I cannot forgive them because when I told them to do this, they, this the fourth time they did that. This must be who they are. Something's wrong with them. True, true. Indeed. That could very well be the case. But what if you find out the thing that's wrong with them that they keep doing over and over again, you legitimately discover this was something that they really just didn't know how to fix. Are you still unwilling to forgive them? Because hear me out. As long as you're living, you can blink your eye and be in the same boat that they're in. And let me tell you something. If you start to realize that you're doing something incorrectly and it is contrary to your natural way, your natural personality, and you get stuck in a trick bag where people looking at you bad and crazy and, and you, you cannot get out of it, that feels like you're suffocating. Because it doesn't matter what you say or do, you're going to always look to be like your intentions are not well. And see, now when you go to page 16, okay, in the ebook, I do a nice little breakdown right under the, the top part that says perfectly imperfect. And I want you to hear this out, okay? 
It says, when you experience control-based unforgiveness, these are some but not all of the seeds the enemy may try to plant in you. Now, let me tell you what that might look like. So for somebody who struggles with control, when you lose control or you do not get what you want in particular situations, again, this is not necessarily an egomaniacal person. This could just be a person who struggles with control. You might, whether you admit it or not, you may or may not. I'm not saying that you will, but you just have to be open-minded here. You may or may not experience jealousy, bossiness, know-it-all spirit, perfectionism, unhealthy focus on details, unkindness, envy, hard-heartedness. You can run from issues. You can be delusional, incorrigible, often aggravated, short-sighted, and many times disgusted with people. Because they're not doing what you think they should be doing the way you think they should be doing it. And this is how you can tell if this is something that's affecting you. Because guess what? If the actual goal is for it to get done, why are you so angry about how they get it done? If you give somebody 10 minutes to get something done, isn't the point of it to be done within the 10 minutes uh, time frame? Isn't that the point? Or is the point... I need you to do it the way I said to do it. Because if you don't do it the way I'm telling you to do it, then it's not going to get done. If you are saying to get it done in this time period, I don't do anything illegal. I don't do anything contrary to any, uh, any ethics issues. You know, everything is decent and in order. But I just have a way of doing things and you just have a, do a way of doing things. When a person cuts you up, okay, because you're not executing the way they think you should. Although you're getting it done, it's done quickly, it's in a time frame or whatever. It may not, it may not even call for it being done quickly. It just may be, you know, a certain time frame. You know, this is a red flag. And this is also what determines a person's heart. So many times when people do not forgive someone that's that's moving from a control point of view. They're literally just not forgiving somebody because they're mad that the person didn't bow down and do it the way they thought they should do it. Not the fact that they haven't seen them complete tasks before or get things done. Or if you have some type of, you know, agreement with somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like this is the part that gets sticky. And this is the part that often keeps people in bondage because people do not want to see all sides of it. This is why I have to keep saying to y'all. If I'm on here talking about this stuff, I know how to be the one that was villainizing people. And I also know what it's like to be the villain. And I got to be able to say that to y'all. We're not going to get past anything unless we're honest about what's going on. That's just the bottom line. And see, once you start to see what the point of you being stuck in a place of unforgiving somebody because they did not allow you to have the control you wanted. Once you start to pay attention to why that happens, today it should start making sense to you as to why some things not even coming together in your life the way you may want them to because you holding something against somebody and it's for the wrong reason. And see, the reason that you're thinking is, well, they did this, they did that, they keep doing this or whatever. How, whatever, it may play out differently for every person. But the thing that's going to get you in a trick bag and keep you in a trick bag is that you're holding something against somebody and the bottom line is that it's just not, you just don't have control of it. I have to oversimplify right here. It is not frilly. It is not fancy. You're just mad. And even when I had to look at my own situations, I'm like, gosh, like, oh, I'm really just mad because they didn't do, they didn't dance to my music basically. How many of you can be honest with yourself about that? Because you want to know what's going to happen. Once you start to really do the big C word, not control, commit, and you stop running from everything, creating diversions and distractions and keep saying this person is bad or this situation is bad. And you keep blaming people trying to make yourself look better because your excessive need to control is, is just really making you angry because now you can't do things the way you think you want to. Yo, if this is really what you're riding high off of, this is not going to end well. That's why you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision to commit 
to healing. You have to make a decision to face things head on. Because if not, if you're the person who's trying to heal from someone not forgiving them because of quote unquote control, guess what? It's going to remain cyclical. Nothing is going to change. Everything is going to keep being the way that it is because nobody's willing to step up and detach from these unhealthy views of control. Now watch this breakdown. When you experience control-based unforgiveness, right? The enemy uses this type of offense usually to prevent you from building your faith and trust in God. You know, a huge part of a person being controlling, that's a self-motivated action. I do believe God gives us good sense and wisdom so that we can properly control situations. But when you are excessively trying to control every single element of something, that is genuinely teetering on a God complex. Yes, I said it. If you do not understand the balance of wiggle room with control, not only do you make things harder for yourself, but you are really writing yourself out of an opportunity to really let God expand you in the place of your faith and in the space of trusting him. You got to hear me out on that. Like, get down to the root. Why, why do you have to just put your hands on it like that? Why can't you relax? Is it because, well, when I relax, it blows up in my face. People don't do what I need them to do, so I got to do it myself. I done said that stuff too. But if you really start to think about it, are you stressed out? Are you stressed out? Are you annoyed? Are you cutting off people who could really help you in a situation and you just choosing not to do it because they're not doing what you think they should do how you want them to do it? You just don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be mad. You don't want to lose money. Yo, nobody wants to feel those things. At least not nobody with good sense because I surely don't want to feel those things. But at the end of the day, when the whole need for control becomes that obsessive, that's weird. And that's the thing people don't say. And, And let me tell you something else I've learned about that from being on both sides. You can get to such a delusional place of believing that you controlling things is just the way it needs to be for me. That you're, you're thinking <laughs> you getting people together and they know that you don't play that. But really, it truly, they're like, man, I don't want to be bothered with that. But you thinking because you control it and you manipulating it the way you want and you taking care of all of the details and the this and the that. Oh, well, not, nah, you know, they're going to do it like I want. No, honey. That's the thing that you don't know all the time. People are like, yeah, they think that, but I just don't want to be bothered because that's weird. Weird. There's no, I, there's no flexibility. There's no, there's no room for other people to shine or to, to help others or to serve others. Again, knowing this from both sides completely hits different. And I'll tell you something too. Usually if you have an ego issue too, or the miscommunication one, which is the, the one we talk about tomorrow, that could also be a huge revelation for you. That could be a huge revelation as to why you may have been stuck in this space. Now watch this part too. This demonic tactic often ruins godly connections due to methodical plotting and scheming so that no one takes your spot or edits your plan. Yo, you do know sometimes when we do a nice little edit to a plan, it it ends up better, right? But usually when we work so hard on something and we cannot disconnect from all of the time and the painstaking detail we put into it, we don't want nobody to mess it up. But I will tell you, me and one of my friends was talking about this the other day, and we have figured out the cheat code. So I'm about to give it to you. If you could work a thousand hours on something, 10,000 hours on something, put all your blood, sweat and tears into it. And then if you figure out or let's just say God said, hey, throw that away. If you fight him on throwing it away because you caught up on everything you did, you're missing it. I'm telling you, I know that sounds insane. And I am not saying that is the thing to do. But what I'm trying to tell you is there's a level of faith and trust in God that if you know you did all that stuff and you can say, you know what? If I got to let it go and do something else, I will. This is not quitting. This is expanding. This is when you become the GOAT. Let me just make an edit. I'm saying the acronym GOAT, not people who are picking apart everybody, YouTube. Oh, they talking about the GOAT. That's the devil. Listen, stop that. And I'm, in fact, I'm doing another video on that because I need to address some stuff for a couple of comments recently that's separate, but I'm going to talk about that too. But anyway, GOAT, G-O-A-T, the greatest of all times. 
right? Y'all got to understand, look at some of the greatest people in history. So many of them have stories like that because here is what you see. They never give up. They relentless. They this and they that. But if you go and sit down and talk to them, they are, they are going to tell you about some things that they wanted to hold on to for dear life. Things that they put all of their blood, sweat and tears into and they had to completely let it go. If you are riding high on things and you think this is, you know, I'm not letting this go. I did this and that. If you are not open to the power of the pivot, you will never expand. You will never transition from your floor to ceiling because you don't get it. And if everybody who comes in your pathway jacks up your idea of what you think that thing is, you cut them up, you will not succeed. You can, you can have the appearance of succeeding for a short period of time, but I can guarantee you that thing you holding on so tightly for one of my favorite song lyrics I ever wrote. You can hold on so tightly to something only for it to slip through your hands. See control, baby? Control could be the kiss of death on something you put your life into. And mishandling people in that process, awful. I am a living witness. I have done it. It has been done to me and I have done it to others. It is not the way to be. I'm telling you, being as transparent as I can, it is not the way to be. Hear me out. Now, watch this. Once the planning and scheming and, and you figuring out, nah, I'm going I'm to create this situation because I run this show. This is my thing. I do this the way I do it. Okay, once you get through with all of that, right, this in turn makes the person who triggered you fall into your unforgivable category. So what happens is when a person doesn't want to dance to your music, when a person fits into the confines of what you need done, but they're not doing it the way you think you should, that it should be done. Again, this is a red flag. The, your goal is not for them to complete the task. Your goal is to control how they complete the task. And guess what? First of all, that's terrible in nature and there's nothing godly about that. So trying to convince yourself that it is, again, another red flag. Okay? So once you get past that part, check this out. The truth is this. What you call a loss of control from your vantage point is really Surrender of control to God. So the two biggest takeaways from control-based unforgiveness is commitment and surrender. Now, do you understand that those two things are the polar opposite? You usually land right in the middle when you do not understand the work of your hands, the, 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 the use of your time, the the. The execution of your creativity. If you are so hell bent on controlling that, it's literally a waste of your time when you look at the grand scheme of things. That's what people don't understand. You have to learn how to commit and surrender at the same time. You have to elevate yourself to such a place that once you see that you could do this multiple times or you can do this again. Or if you say, hey, I did all of this. I'm going to just give it to you, God. I'm going to let it go. It, it's incredible what can happen as a result of that. Y'all, I, when I first started out in songwriting quite a while ago, I was very efficient. I, was, I typed all of my lyrics. I had all of my, my song sheets. I did all of my copyrights. I had everything typed out when I went to a session. The, the singer, because I, I don't sing. I'm a completely, I'm completely a songwriter. I'm not a singer songwriter. I just help the singer and the producer. Okay. I would go in, I would have my lyrics and all I would do, people would just take one of my books. Y'all, I have booklets. I call them volumes. I got hundreds of these things. I kid you not. I got hundreds of books and I call them volumes. I still have them to this day. And believe you me, before I leave this earth, I'm going to try to get as many of those songs done as possible. But needless to say, a person would meet me. And again, you can just see from how I show up. That's my work ethic. I've always been persistent. I'm still that same girl. I do that in other areas of my life, right? But even in the midst of me having that great quality, I still had some control issues. But I realized I had control issues because in places where I was supposed to be flourishing, I had to fight. 
So a lot of times when you see people who are being controlling towards you or they are unforgiving towards you because you bucked their system and you didn't do things the way you said, the way they said they wanted you to do it, that is usually a fight response from somebody when they were presented opportunities in their past, when they should have been flourishing and doing great and being appreciated for what they do and what they bring to the table. They were not. They might have been villainized or cut off or made to feel like they weren't good enough. So when they were able to create something for themselves, they are like, no way, no way. It is not happening. I am not allowing this person to do this. Everybody going to do what I say do, period. It didn't matter if what they said to do was contrary to that person's personality. Meaning if you just released and relinquished that control off of them, you will begin to see so many beautiful things because that person is flourishing and they're operating in the way that gives them peace where they could best serve and help you. Not through the guise of what you're trying to say because you want to control their outcomes and what they do. That's the part we don't see. So that's why I want to make very clear if you're the person who needs the forgiveness from control or if you are the person who is doing the opposite. If you're the person who feels offended and you do not want to forgive someone because they did not honor what you wanted to control, it doesn't matter. The point is, if you can learn how to commit, commit to the healing, commit to the work, Commit to the understanding that you are only passing through this season. And if you can get to the bottom of why this has happened to you repeatedly or why you're still holding on to this unforgiveness because that person didn't let you control them or you lost control of the situation, because you got to call it what it is. If every time you talk about these situations is their fault, that's another red flag. I'm telling you, that's another red flag. It's just like the person who's, who's just, you know, who's the villain. The villain has to take the responsibility because, man, I didn't have the right attitude. I mean, I didn't do this right. This was awful of me. You can't just walk around and and not take the responsibility. It's the same thing. And again, it's going to make some people mad. But if you're a person where everybody say, oh, she's just so nice. She's just the nicest person ever. And she does anything for anybody. Yo, you need to be careful with that, too. I had to learn that, too. Y'all, too much of anything is not good. And one thing you may not have heard before today is this. If you are used to being the person who's just put up on a pedestal because you're so great and you're so kind, aka most times a doormat and you get used by people because you're not taking up for yourself, but that's another YouTube for another day, okay? You over there full of yourself. Oh, I'm so this, I'm so that. That is not pleasing to God because that still teeters on a God complex. Almost like, you know, you're being a doormat and you want to change it, but people feel sorry for you and you like feeling like the martyr. Hey, let's step on the devil neck. We got to cut that out too. It's no different than the extreme opposite. That person mean, they selfish. They don't let nobody do nothing. I got this. I'm going to take care of this. Guess what? You teetering on the bad stuff too. That's why you got to get to the middle ground. Both of those things that I just described have to do with a God complex and control. And a lot of times we are stuck and not forgiving people who act like that way where they're too nice. And on the other end where they're too mean, you have to get to the middle, which requires commitment and surrender. So let's just, let's ride out on this one. So once you understand, you have to commit to relinquishing control which in turn will allow you to surrender to the thing that God has for you, surrender to the thing that you're purposed to do. Once you understand that you can successfully surrender and commit, that is going to change your life. And once you come to the realization of how this all works, it's going to change your life. It's going to make things a lot lighter and it's going to make things much greater because then you'll see that, hey, you know what? I might have been approaching this incorrectly, you know, and let's, you know me, let's do both sides. If you're the person who is not being forgiven because you came in with the attitude, like things needed to go your way and things needed to be the way you said, which made you attitudinal, which made you unbearable or whatever the case may be. You have to take this time to say, you know what? I just didn't do that right. And even if you discover why you were leading with those bad attitudes or miscommunication or confusion or whatever. Once you figure out what it is, stand in it, accept it, deal with it, heal from it and move on. If you are the person 
who says you want things to be a certain way, say you want things to come together. You want a particular type of this and you want this type of this and you only around this type of person. You got to make sure you're that type of person. Because just because you get things done and you accomplish things, that does not make you a winner. That does not make you a leader. That could actually make you a tyrant. And that's the thing. When the elephant in the room is, that person is going to attack. That person is going to hurt. That person is going to harm. You're not going to get any points for that. And if the goal is for real peace, if the goal is to really have things going a certain way, you are going to address those things. You are not going to hide behind the guise of this is what I want. This is how I'm going to do it. It's just not, it's just not what it is. And again, I have been told I've been bossy my whole life. I'm just figuring out right now that if, 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 if people say I'm aggressive, if people say I'm bossy, then guess what? Aggressiveness can turn into being assertive. Being bossy could turn into leadership. So I just decide to be an assertive leader now. And I have my moments, but you have to make a decision and that has to go with control. And it also has to go with control once you you understand, like we say, commitment and surrender. I hope this didn't go over your head, y'all. I know this is a little deep in some spaces, but I really do believe that it is really important that we sit with how easy it is for us to get caught up. And what we think should be a way and it's really not the best way for us. A lot of people are behaving in this way with control based unforgiveness because of survival mode. A lot of times you can look back at a person's past and history and you can see how if they didn't hold on for their life and fight so much for things and to keep things and to work so hard for things. They will not understand that when you get older, it is God's pleasure to help you to learn how to work smarter and not so hard. You know, you can literally transition from these things, but this becomes increasingly difficult when all you want to do is stick to the thing you think it should be. And that behavior has to be unlearned. Control will ruin you. Control will keep you on the floor. Control will keep you blinded. Control will keep you apart from what's best for you. You want to know why I know? I've been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt more than one time. And I can't promise you and say that it's not something that I might not struggle with again in my future, but I will tell you this. Now that I see what the triggers are, now I see why I react from first reaction in particular situations with a negative connotation, I don't have to do that anymore because now I know why I was doing it. And for some of y'all, I just want you to know, don't feel so bad about yourself. Because I know what it's like when you say, no, that's not what I meant, but it doesn't look like it because you've been doing it and you keep doing it years later. People in your family like, man, what's the matter with him? What's the matter with her? Your friends like, I don't want to be friends with her no more. She keep doing that. And they just don't understand your heart. That is why control could be demonic. When control is not done the proper way, when control is not done the way that's most helpful to the greater good. It can be so destructive. So we have to get to those layers. We have to break down those things when it comes to unforgiveness. Control. Oh, excuse me. Control-based unforgiveness. Now, let me tell you what the leading scripture is on that. Proverbs 25, 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. So let me tell you how God deals with control. I'm going to give you another word. Now, you got to go to the e-book on page 17 and you got to get the other scriptures. But here's one good one. It says, Matthew 6, 34, it says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. Okay. Now, with that being said, y'all, I want to go ahead and read our prayer about control based unforgiveness. And y'all know the drill. We're going to ride out with the decree. And then we're going to go on um, from there. Okay, so, Lord, it has been a challenge to let go. Here I am truly believing that I was right to not forgive because of my distorted view of control, and I was wrong. I know you saw what happened, and you know how I got here. My prayer is that you help me to set myself free from overthinking and unnecessary control right now. I can't see how letting go will fully land me where I desire. But I know that operating in unforgiveness won't get me there. It's time for a mind shift. I appreciate that you will take care of those that have hurt and offended me. I also know that you will show me myself so that I too can be better. 
I understand that you showing me myself does not diminish the hurt I felt from the situation. I do want to live my authentic purpose free from misplaced control. I will go from controlling to setting order. I finally understand the difference. Please help me to operate in forgiveness with a pure heart. Show me anything that could stop my growth and understanding in the aspect of my personality. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And y'all, the decree is this. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I do not control my narrative from fear. I control my narrative from faith. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you like, you share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Download the ebook in the description below. And also check out the huge, huge healing post that I put. It says 2020 on my IG page. The link is beneath here as well. And you can get some more context about where we got some of our information on control-based unforgiveness that really helped us to drive the the point home. Make sure you uh, be patient with yourself, y'all. Because I'm sure most people, if not, you know, I mean, the majority of people have experienced this from both sides. And it's not fun because you have to learn these really nasty things sometimes about yourself. But the beautiful thing is what, y'all? We've been talking about it the whole episode, right? You get to learn how to surrender and commit at the same time. So tomorrow's our last episode on the forgiveness series, and it is on miscommunication. Miscommunication based on forgiveness. Thanks, guys, again. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too.